over the last few weeks, we've been encouraging children and young people with their parents and their carers to find different ways of encountering God and to grow in the fruits of the Spirit. This week we're considering generosity. And in a moment we'll hear from Rachel and Raheel on some ideas to share with parents and carers. Being generous is a practice of our faith and it's encouraged by being part of a generous community. So we want to start by asking you to consider what it means to be a generous church towards children and young people. With some thoughts from Karaway Dogu, the Bishop of Woolwich. Hi, I am Karaway, Bishop of Woolwich. Our children and young people will feel most welcome in the church when we receive them with love in a friendly and non-judgmental way. Provide a safe place for them to ask questions. Make them feel they belong as joint stakeholders. Organize exciting activities for them to participate in and to provide food to share with them as the icing on the cake. When we've done all this and taking them seriously, they will feel welcomed as part of the church. Thank you and God bless you. Bishop Caraway is a gift to the church and we are so grateful for his insights. We are inspired to be generous because of the abundantly generous God who shares his light and love through us to others. Gifts from God are both brilliant in and of themselves, and they are precious because of who has done the giving. If we in turn choose to give to others, then we are rejoicing in God's goodness to us. Luke's Gospel tells the story of Zacchaeus, the short in stature man, the tax collector for the Roman occupiers. The crowd was not at all pleased that this was where Jesus was choosing to stay. Have you ever noticed that it is Jesus visiting Zacchaeus at home that brings about the change in him? Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. The story of someone meeting Jesus face to face would have been lost if no one had noticed it happening. It is vital for us to notice and name changes in behavior so that we can continue to grow in faith. You see, being generous isn't just about reaching into our pockets or making sure others have what they need, even though we are called to do that. Too. We can widen our definition of what it means to be generous, to include a generosity of heart, of how we treat and love and behave towards one another. It doesn't need to be a big deal. It only takes a second to name when our children are being generous. When I saw you give up your seat on the sofa for your brother, that showed your generous heart. Or when you asked about that woman on the news and if she would be all right, that really showed a generous spirit. When these ways of thinking are noticed, named and nurtured, we move closer to living lives with God every day. For this activity, you will need paper, a card, some felt tip pens or pencils. Generosity is about happy giving rather than getting. It's the opposite of being selfish. You can be generous with your things by letting others use them or giving them away. You can also be generous with your time by using some of it to help others. Draw a large clock face onto a piece of paper and then draw a line down the middle. Each half represents 30 minutes. Think about the people in your house. Who could you give 30 minutes of your time to? Write their name in one half of the clock and how you're going to help them. If you can't think of anything, you could ask them what they need help with. On the other 
side of the clock. Write the name of a friend or someone in your family who doesn't live with you. How could you give 30 minutes of your time as a way of being generous to them too? Perhaps you could do or make something for them or write them a letter. Mother Teresa said, help one person at a time and always start with the person nearest you. In the Apostle Paul's letter to Timothy, he writes, be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share. Prayer Spaces in Schools have developed a set of resources, just like the one you've seen in action. They are designed to be easy to put together using materials that should be easy to find. There are lots of examples on their website. Generosity is important in how and why we pray for each other. One way to grow a generous attitude is to use an active empathy when we pray for others. Rather than just naming who we pray for, we can stop to think and imagine what they may be feeling like, what they may need from God and ask for that. Amazing grace, how sweet. If you haven't had a chance to view all the videos for parents and carers yet, then head to the Faith at Home website, they're all there. We encourage you to share these links in any email newsletters that you have. Or you might like to embed them on your own church website. That's all we have time for. But as we finish, we'll end with a reminder that generosity is at the heart of our faith because generosity and grace are at the heart of God's nature. Oh,